opportunity tonight, which is to introduce the speaker. It's Maura Noon, who has been a Sangha member at Mountain Cloud since uh, almost as long as I have. She arrived fairly soon after I did on the invitation of Will Brennan back in late 2010. Maura came, I think, in 2011 and has been um, a really uh, remarkable student and a, a, a very special honor to have been able to work with Maura in this peculiar way we do in Zen. Um, she has had, I, I think it's worth mentioning, significant uh, health issues and challenges that she uh, manages and rides through with an extraordinary grace and uh, resilience actually and her practice is, is never thrown off and I believe um, <clears throat> she's often told me that her practice has been a, a mainstay of her, of her um, capacity to ride through these many challenges and uh, she's She's become what we call a senior student in Sambo Zen, meaning that she has finished or all but finished uh, the first journey through the rather long koan curriculum that we have. And Maura has actually already in that capacity given us one talk. Um, <clears throat> some of you may have been there, a wonderful talk perhaps a year or so, I, my memory is not quite so accurate these days, but more than a year ago, I think, and less than two years ago. And so it's a great delight to be able to introduce Maura once again. Thank you very much. And Peg, if you would, at this point, I think, unspotlight me, I'll, un I'll mute myself and we'll go to Maura. Hello. Thank you, Henry. I just want to clarify one thing. Will was very key when I arrived at Mountain Cloud, but I actually heard just by chance you give a talk at, at um, Upaya, and that led me to Mountain Cloud. That, that saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appeared, is very applicable. Um, I just want to start on that vein by saying, so I don't forget at the end, if there's anything, Henry, that you want to add or clarify when I'm through, please feel free. Um, I'm going to start with a little introduction and then I've separated my talk into three chapters, I guess. Um, the first would be called Forget About That. The second, Moo Harmonizes. And the third, No Separation, No Exception. And I'm just gonna start by saying Mu is powerful. Mu is alive. Mu is supportive. Just uh, by chance this morning, I came upon an essay by John Lewis, who died last week. And today was his funeral. And I just felt very strongly compelled to share a few lines from it. He, if you don't know who he is, for whatever reason, he was a, I mean, he was a civil rights activist. He was much more than that. I, I would call him a, a compassion warrior, <laughs> a love warrior. He, he truly was. Um, he wrote this essay before he died and asked that it be published on the day of his funeral. Millions of people, 
motivated simply by human compassion, laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. He says, democracy is not a state, it is an act, and each generation much, must do its part to help build what we called the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. I just want to interject here that Mu has the power to bring us to peace with ourselves, which is a very important step in order to help. He, he closes it with, though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love, sorry, <laughs> and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last. And that peace finally triumphs over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. Well, I hadn't intended to begin with that, but it, it's powerful. The other image that came to mind was the Grinch who stole Christmas. Um, if you don't know the story, the Grinch is this creature that lives on the top of Mount Crumpet, and he's the epitome of greed, hatred, and ill will. And he hates Christmas, so he decides he's going to prevent it from coming. There's a town down below Mount Crumpet called Whoville, where the Who's live, and he decides he's going to stop it from coming. So he dresses up like Santa, takes his dog, Max, arrives in the middle of the night and takes everything, all the presents, all the food, anything that is associated with Christmas. And as he's going back up the mountain early in the morning, he suddenly hears the Who's down in Whoville start singing. And there's a line that says, they say the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And there's an image in the cartoon of a, of a sort of gold frame around his heart. And it grows and grows and the frame breaks. Boing! <laughs> and it's really wonderful. And I, this, uh, I think this image came through because the who's don't mind. That's, that's, that's the, the key. They, uh, they don't mind that everything's been taken, taken away from them. They're still singing. And the more, the more we can clear up the fog that prevents us from seeing that, from experiencing that, the louder our singing gets, each of us. And that brings me to Moo and 
a poem written by Mumon. He has just had a profound experience. Mu has exploded and there's nothing left, nothing left with this boundless compassion. And this is the poem. Mu, 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 mu. I printed out a copy uh, from, from a book that I actually have not read, um, a copy of this poem. And there's a little, little, a few sentences about it I'd like to read. It's from Zen Beyond All Words by Wolfgang Kopp. He says, this marvelous poem by the 13th century Chinese Zen master Mumon was written in a meter of five Chinese characters. It is a profound statement of Zen. Zen master Mu Meng could have written Mu just once, but instead he wrote Mu in a meter of five characters was no Zenist joke. His aim was to burn Mu as the blazing seal of the Buddha mind into our hearts. So that, that brings me to forget about that. <laughs> um, when I first started sitting with Mu, as is a habit of my brain, Mora's brain, I, I started to try to connect the dots with things that were arising from, my, from the past, specifically uh, poetry and things I'd read along my seeking journey and I was having Dogasan I, I, with Henry and I brought up something by the philosopher, actually he's a philosopher, Jesuit priest, archaeologist, paleontologist, Teilhard de Chardin and Henry's response was, forget about that. This, when, when the seed was planted for me to give a moo talk, this came back to me because I realized how it just cut through everything in a, in a really helpful way, but it was painful because Moo, the koan Moo, the first koan we sit with in the koan, in the koan training from Joshu, um, it, doesn't give, it doesn't give us anything to hang on to, nothing, just Moo, 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 Moo. And the brain revolts a little bit, I think. And in addition to that, We, we kind of have a, it seems like a scaffolding of me, of who we are. And when Henry said, forget about that, a big, <laughs> a big beam <laughs> kind of fell off. <laughs> and somehow it, 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 it penetrated. And I just kept sitting, just keep sitting with Mu. You know, when you're sitting with Mu, there, there's nothing to make sense of. It, it's, it cannot be conceived. It's not a concept. And when the thoughts come or when we speak, um, it's very easy to get into concepts. And 
Mu can only be experienced. Just Mu. Mu harmonizes. Uh, when we sit with Mu, we are harmonizing with Mu. This is something I heard John Gein or another Sambo Zen teacher say in a talk that we have posted on our on our website podcast section, which has many talks from memory. Um, we're, we're harmonizing with Mu, and Mu is an active participant. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's supporting, it's helping. We continue to focus on it and it's, it's helping expand this sort of space where things seem to be held in such a narrow place. It sometimes feels like we're being squeezed through a straw, but then there's space for everything. And, and it is true what Henry said about my own uh, challenges from illness and an injury. I, I, my life completely changed. It's something I still work with. And, you know, allowing things to be just as they are, sitting with things just as they are, sitting with me just as I am, whatever's happening, if, just as is, no fixing. Um, and Mu is helping. It, it's, it's alive. This is a concentration practice, a deep absorption practice. And, and when, when, you, when you can focus all of your cells, really focus on Mu, it, it's a point of attention that it is so vast that it holds, it can hold everything. And it's really helpful at times to back away and have a broader awareness and then go back. And then you might find as more time goes by just naturally fall into the, of uh, into Mu. There's a flow state. This is, this is just coming from Mora's own experience. I don't know scientifically what is happening, but probably all of us have experienced a flow state where you're very focused on something and it's a great relief to an active brain because you're just focused on one thing, whether it's doing math or painting or uh, shooting basketballs, whatever it is. And this kind of focus is, it's very, a very deep concentration, but instead of the focus becoming narrow, it just expands. I mean, not the focus, the, the everything seems to expand space is created. So I want to play um, a piece of music right now. It's a little exercise. It's, it's a, the Bach cello suite number one prelude. Um, it came to me a while ago. It seemed to it seemed to come back and I believe the reason is that the first time I heard this piece of music I was in high school and I might as well not have even had a body let alone know what is going on in my body and so much of this practice is a body practice is really learning to listen to listen to your body the koan training is about your body um, not, not about here. And the first time I heard this piece of music, I just froze and I could feel things in my, in my chest and abdomen, you know, where all your vital organs are. And, and ever since then, whenever I hear this piece of music, I just freeze. 
it, it's there's only sound you know no nothing else and i thought it might be a good little exercise and practice to work on absorption practice because there's one note i listened to it to try to understand what it was that always brought me down into my core really um and it's the first note of the piece and it it, it seems to come back to it. it it goes you'll hear it if you haven't heard this you'll recognize that it's a famous piece of music but i just would encourage you to just keep focusing on that one note one note and feel it in your body and then when it changes which it does after about a minute just sort of just listen that open awareness okay i'll get it set up no separation no exception this is something i heard yamada yamada rion roshi say when we're harmonizing with mu mu can suddenly just burst forth until there's no more you, just moo. Moo you, moo you. There's a line from a Gerard Manley Hopkins poem that 
came to mind, which is it will flame out like shining from shook foil. There's a visual that came to mind about a storage closet. Have you ever, uh, if you have an old storage closet, especially when I was a kid, there are games and kids games and sometimes something's beeping in there and you can't figure out what it is. Um, well, this sitting with Moo is like the storage closet that is you. And that beeping, that beeping is me, my, I. Uh, it's like you're surging and surging and surging through the closet and you can't find the beeping. And then it's empty and there's no beeping. No beeping, no closet, gone. And another way to look at that analogy is Moo seems to remove many things without our conscious awareness. It just seems to, each time we sit, things just move and when we're struggling it's it's wonderful to trust that helpful to trust that and it some things are stubborn and you may need help with those things which is perfectly which is fantastic it often takes a long time to even discover what you might need help with. You know, you might not even think you need help. Um, and as I said before, the more, the more things are removed, the more the scaffolding kind of starts to shake and the, the closet starts to empty, <laughs> uh, all the, the more your brain may start to revolt. I, I, I read this great line in a novel recently. It says, she said, funny how when you can't sleep, the brain turns itself inside out, becomes a desperate and hungering thing. And, you know, it's, I could say the same about sitting it, because often people obviously are moving, moving, moving. And the first time that they're still the entire day is when they go to bed. Um, but, but we who are practicing are really cultivating this stillness, which is so powerful. And continuing to focus on Mu is just an incredible support. There's another word that Yamada Roshi used, which is goneness. And it's because when everything is one, it is gone. Oneness, goneness. They're, they're the same. I don't want to I want to say too much. I almost didn't say that word, but it captures the experience just perfectly. I'm going to read uh, something from Yamada Kohen Roshi that expresses it much, much more more, much better than I could ever express it. 
He says, this is from the Zen, the authentic gate. Please impress this upon your hearts. When we perfectly realize that self and other are not two, not only will we see ourselves and circumstances as one, but we will see ourselves and everything in the universe as one body. One, during a Tay show many years ago, um, Henry referred to Mu as the golden ticket, uh, referring to Willy Wonka, I think. And this, these lyrics from a Bruce Springsteen song came to mind, which I'm gonna read first. It's called Land of Hope and Dreams. This train carries saints and sinners. This train carries losers and winners. This train carries whores and gamblers. This train carries lost souls. This train carries brokenhearted. This train thieves and sweet souls departed. This train carries fools and kings. This train, dreams will not be thwarted. This train, faith will be rewarded. This train, hear the steel wheels singing. This train, bells of freedom ringing. This, this train, you don't have to get on it. You're already on it. There's, there's an incredible experience. There's an incredible freedom in discovering that you're not only on it, you are it. You already are it. This, for that, well, I don't want to say for that reason, but whether or not you experience Mu exploding, is there, is, It's irrelevant. You are it. It's just a matter of clearing the fog. And your sitting is powerful. And your sitting is helping. I, as John Lewis was, was talking about, uh, no matter whether it's, whether you can, whatever you can do in the world will sort of unfold naturally. Because the more you sit, the more fog clears, the more natural and easy it is to be yourself and to not mind what's happening so much. I know it's a really difficult time and if we are harmonizing with this boundless compassion, then that energy will, will help. And the other thing I wanted to say was, there's a lot of discussion about being alone during this pandemic, uh, people dying alone, being alone, being quarantined. I personally have actually been quarantined since 
whenever this started. So I've only been near, the only people I've been near are nurses and people at the lab. Um, and I have to say in the beginning, I've spent a lot of time alone for various reasons uh, and sort of, how can I say this, sort of um, in solitude for necessary reasons, but this is very different. And I found myself getting a little caught up in worrying about uh, not having human interaction or maybe it was gonna affect my brain. It's really, it's just not true. We, we are connected uh, always. And on this level of, of experience or this sort of facet of the diamond where Mu explodes and you discover what you are, you, you, you find that you, it's impossible to be alone. It's just impossible. Everything is supporting us. Not only move, I mean, move, chair, table, glasses, cushion. And, and when you sit, know that you are supported. On, on levels that it's just impossible to conceive. And I just want to say before I, before I stop, when, when, when working through the koans, there's very little talking, if any. And this is the most I've ever said about any koan. And it's very odd, I have to say. Um, but I just, I really felt strong about sort of expressing my gratitude for Mu, for Joju, for this practice. For this. And thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I think I will stop there. <laughs>